Hi, this is Chip Lacoco, and welcome back to my podcast channel. Please be sure to subscribe to my podcast so that you can get the latest episodes upon their release. And if possible, go ahead and leave a review so that others can find out about my podcast. Today's podcast is part one of a series which will cover writing techniques for aspiring authors out there. I'm a historical fiction writer. So, of course, that will be my my niche, let's call it. Almost all writers of fiction have to consider elements in writing. Historical fiction has one element that stands out more than the others. Most writers of fiction have to deal with these elements. Character development, dialogue, the theme, the plot, conflict, in the setting. Historical fiction writers have another concept, which is world building, which ties into the setting as well. This is what distinguishes historical fiction from just the normal fiction that you may read regarding romance novels, literary fiction, or just general fiction. Historical fiction is going to take that story and put it in a certain time and place. So part one of the series is world building. It's the probably the most important part of a historical fiction author's job. It's to create that world where you're going to place your characters. I hope at the end of this podcast, you walk away with a little bit more information and are ready to go ahead and start tackling that project, that book that you've always been wanting to write. Um, And if it's a historical fiction, it's going to begin with world building. So what do we mean by world building? It's as simple as the author is building a world. World building is what makes the historical fiction book more authentic. World building really begins with a time period. There's two ways for an author, when they begin the process of developing their story, to find their way into that time period. The first will be using a certain historical time period as a backdrop, and then you place your fictional characters and events within that time period, let's say within that world. The other way an author can do it is you you choose historical events that you're going to write about, real historical events that took place. And then you create your fictional characters who experienced it, and you put them right into that story, right into that real time period. I'll use the my own writing as a basis to really explain if you're going to write a story based on historical events. My third novel is entitled Saving the Music. That story takes place during World War II. It's the story of Jewish musicians from Vienna and from Munich who flee the rising Nazi German threat and where with the help of a network of religious lay people in the Vatican, they are hidden in Sicily. Thus, my world building, thus my setting, is set by the story which I'm going to tell. The time period, 1943-1944. The setting, Europe, Germany, Vienna, Rome, Sicily. That has been established. The parameters of the story are now set in stone. The historical events that surround that time period are easily discoverable by me through research. And now I'm able to develop my story within that time period. And now we get to the most important part, and perhaps the most difficult part. And I'm going to use my story as the example. So Saving the Music takes place during 1943-1944, well before I was even born, correct? But it's my job as the author, as the author of historical fiction, to include historical details about the daily life of your characters. What do they wear? What do they, what do, they do for a living? How do they get around? There's no cell phones, so how do they communicate? 
those types of details are what's going to bring the reader in more into your story and come back for more if they if you do a good job. And ultimately, the reader of historical fiction is looking for exactly that. They're looking f- to get that feeling of what it was like to live at the time that you set forth your story. If you're going to talk about the Vikings, then you have to go ahead and create that world. If it's going to be Pompeii, let's go ahead and create that world. It's very difficult, of course, and takes a lot of time to not only research and understand that area, because remember, you're going to, you're going to have to completely put yourself into that time period in order to write about that time period. So you must do amazing amounts of research to get a flavor for what life is like. Because the moment you put pen to paper and you start telling that story, you always have to be cognizant of the fact that I'm within this time period. My world building takes place in this confined area and I can't go outside of it because the reader will get very angry if you go outside of that time period. They are reading your book so that they can become part of your world, feel it, and understand, and come away with, this is what it was like to live back then. So how do we do it? How do we create a story and write it in such a way that the reader will feel like they are living and breathing within that time period? It goes against everything that they know about today's conventions. Everything, everything how they live their life, they're able to, to understand, well, this is what it was like to live then. This is what they ate. This is how they dressed. This is how they spoke. How do you as an author recreate that world at a time when you did not live? <laughs> you don't know exactly what it was. And it's all about research, 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 research. So exactly how how does the author research such topics and what is the best way to do so? So I'm going to give you some techniques to expand your research. Where should you look? Where can you get information to help create this world? Let's first consider the place. So if my story is going to take place in the Vatican, and let's say I've never visited the Vatican, of course, the internet is a wealth of knowledge, correct? You can go on the internet, look up images, look up videos, you can read the history of the Vatican. Um, That is going to give you that flavor of history and actual photographs in which you you can kind of develop in your own mind, this is what it looks like, and decide when you're telling your story and you're trying to, to, to show that scene, you're able to remember that picture and pick out one little part or two little parts from that photograph to describe into the story so that the reader feels like, oh yes, I'm looking upon St. Peter's Square, right? The other way to do it and I highly recommend this, is YouTube has some great videos. And of all things, they're health walking videos, right? You, 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 can, you can get on YouTube and for 20 minutes stroll in France, in Rome, wherever you want to be. So if I'm going to write a story about Rome, go watch those videos. You can actually get healthy while you're doing it and go walk with the, with the person on the screen. But what, you're, what it's doing is it's allowing you to see the area. Now, granted, this is a modern day video, but it's going to give you the flavor of how the streets are laid out, how the older buildings look. And it's just a way to give you your mind's eye, that, that, that picture of where your story is going to take place. Because, of course, you're not going to be able to go, go travel to all these places. You would love to. I would love for, my, for the publisher to go ahead and give me you know, an allowance to, hey, go spend three weeks in Sicily to go write your story. It's not going to happen, most likely. 
I hope it does for you, but not like not likely. So what you have to do is, if you're unfamiliar with the area, that's what you have to do. You have to go find pictures because pictures in video is going to create in your mind at least what it looks like, right? From there, I also recommend maps, and you can find maps at the time that your story is set because those maps are going to help make sure that if you say it's on this street, that that street was in existence in 1922 or 1925, and it hasn't been changed to a current map of today. So again, you want to go ahead and look at maps. So once you have the place established, you've, you've done your research, you kind of know what everything looks like, you, you can almost be in a position now where you could write about it, right? This is the, going to be the key, and it's going to be the key in pretty much everything we're going to discuss, and that is your imagination. Your research has showed you what the area looks like, the buildings, the street, the places. Now your imagination is going to add in the smells, the sounds, things that will touch the reader's sensory. They're going to feel, smell, taste, and become part of the story. To assist us with our imagination, of course, we need to do more research. There's a really good blog called the Pro Writing, I think it's pro, ProWritingAid.com. They have a blog, and they had, had done an article called Building a World Within a World, World Building in Historical Fiction. They stated, and I, I tend to agree with them, that the best way to find information about life in the past is to turn to a good library, possibly one at a local college or university, because they will have a broad selection of scholarship. And what you're looking for is classic social histories that explore the ways that ignored that ordinary people lived in the past. As the writer wrote on their blog, these social histories are often light on theory and instead aim for accessibility and engaging detail in, 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 in teaching what it was like to live back then, what it was like to live your life. These are excellent resources for an author to kind of get that feel for what life was like. And, the, the, and I agree with the author. Probably the libraries are a great resource to get that information. And kind of tied to the social history aspect of it, I also recommend that you go pick up a novel that was writ written around the same time period. And I'm talking about a novel in that same time period, but was written contemporaneously. Meaning if it's a story about 1925, go pick up a novel from someone who wrote a story back in 1925 because they're going to tell their story based on what life was like at that time. And, you know, I'll, I'll throw it forward to today. If you're going to, if you're going to read a novel that takes place in 2022, it's pretty much going to mirror our current life. Cell phones, email, um, cars, electric cars, our politics, the way we speak, all of that will be in that story because the author's within that same time frame. So I highly recommend, and it's a great way, it's a, it's a great way to kind of cheat because the author who wrote in 1922 is creating, it really isn't involved in world building because that's the world that they live in. But for us, it's a great way to create a world because we can use their way that they describe life at that time to tell our story. And I would be remiss if I didn't mention this aspect of world building. It's so much related to dialogue, and that is, Depending on when you set your story, we, of course, speak differently than somebody in, let's say, the 1700s, the 1800s. We just have a different mode of speaking. Our, 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 the inflection, um, the way we phrase things are different. It gets to be very difficult in historical fiction writing uh, to, to kind of determine 
where does the story fall relative to dialogue? Do we want the story to be told exactly how they spoke, which of course will make it more difficult for the reader of today to kind of get into the story, or do we use modern language? I think the easy answer is it's a blend. It's a blend. I think it's important to tell the story and to write the story in such a way that it's very accessible for the reader of today. Yet, at the same time, giving them a flavor, again, for what life was, back, was, like, what life was like back then. I think that the, the key is, is that you cannot use modern phraseology that all of a sudden shakes the reader because it just it jumps out at them like that doesn't make where did that sentence come from so you need to to make sure that every phrase fits in the context of the time period yet you don't want to really keep writing in the style that they spoke um just because i think it would make it very trying on the reader and it would become very tiresome but I don't want to make you think it's easy because that is it is hard. It's a very hard um, process of the of the of the whole overall writing of the story because you have to constantly make sure that while you're writing it that you're not throwing in euphemisms or phrases that we would use in today's world that doesn't fit your story. And again, you want to make sure that you're trying to place the reader into that time period. So, you know, I think you can use some of their, the way that they speak. Um, but again, you just have to be careful not to go overboard. So that, I do think it makes it very difficult for the reader. The next aspect to consider are names. The names that you will apply to your characters. Names matter. And of course, in historical fiction, you just need to make sure that the name was in existence back at the time that your story was being told. So, how, again, how do we go about making sure that the name was in existence? Uh, number one, research. You can, you can go on the Internet and just look at some historical figures around that time and see names that they, that they used, you know, their names. Two would be, again, if you read a novel from that time period, you'll find out character names. And, um, you know, you can't use verbatim that person's name, but you can kind of use a blend or just use a first name just so that you can, again, get a feel for those names. Um, the other way is, particularly if you live in an old city like I do in New Orleans, where you have a graves that date back to the 1850s, go spend one day walk around the graveyard, and you'll see within the cemetery on the on the on the graves themselves the names in with the birth date and date of death for those individuals, and you'll see all the different names. And it's great because if your if your story is taking place in in Sicily or in France, and you see the the people who immigrants who came to America, for example, or came to New Orleans. Um, you'll see their name, and you'll see the dates that they lived, and you know that's a name that was in existence at that time. Just a, an easy way to kind of um, you know just kind of make sure that the names you're using were names that were in existence. Again, does that be popular? A popular name. Uh, although that does help, but at least that it was a name that was around at that time. So we've spoken about different techniques and processes for you as the writer so that you can put your reader into this world, so they can put you immerse them into this, this time period in the story that you're telling. One aspect that we don't really look at a lot of times, or you really can't find people even discussing it, and that is, is what joy is it for the author, though, for writing historical fiction? And I think the answer just depends upon each individual writer. And really, I can only speak for myself, so I will tell you the joy that I get in writing historical fiction. I'm an attorney by trade. I work all day, looking at papers, dealing with people's problems. But when I sit down and write my story, if it takes place in the 19, let's say the early 1900s, for example, like my second book, A Song for Bella Fortuna, I'm able to immerse myself in that world. And I'm momentarily, as long as I'm writing that, that, that chapter or those pages or whatever I'm working on, 
I'm able to sort of leave this world, leave this time and go into a world and discover that world. It's an extremely gratifying um, moment for you know when you when you're working on those not on a novel. Um, you know the research is hard, yet the research is fun because you're 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 learning so much about how people lived. And the whole time you're learning, you're putting into your mind how's my character going to fit into this story? How is my story going to develop within this time frame? And again, so it's every time you sit down, you get to enter this world, and you really it, it's it's a unique feeling because it, it's something that um, it's it's a little hard to explain, but it's it's a way to kind of get away from all your different issues going on presently in the world around you because you're going into a different time, a different place, and it's and it's really just a um, it's a wonderful way, and that's why I'm I'm so happy to be a historical fiction writer. So in conclusion, thank you very much for listening to my podcast. I hope that you come away with a little understanding about world building in historical fiction. You know, study up some more on it, and then hopefully that leads you to pick up that pen, pick up the paper, and start jotting down ideas on beginning that story that you're going to tell. And again, the first decision you need to make is are you going to write about historical events and put your story within those events? Or are you going to pick a time frame and then place your characters right within that time frame and start building your story from there? So again, thanks for listening, and keep writing. Ciao.